Well, good morning, everybody. It's lovely to see you here this morning as we come to worship the Lord, to hear his word, and to be taught uh, what he wants us to do. It's nice to see that we have some visitors among us. Uh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome, everybody, to come and join us after the service for some tea or coffee and some conversation. Uh, this, uh, the, this Wednesday, uh, we have uh, another St. James's Street Kitchen. Uh, it'll start at 12.30. So um, if you are in Monmouth on Wednesday lunchtime and would like um, something to eat and some fellowship, well, uh, then please come and join us there. Now, uh, we will, as usual, have a short prayer, time for silent prayer. And then Ivy Jones, who um, is a local preacher from Newport, has come to join us at very short notice. Very grateful, very glad to see you here, Ivy. And she will be leading us in our service of worship this morning. So let us let us now pray. Dear Lord, open our ears we may hear you and learn what you want this morning. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Morning. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be among you here this morning. I have been here once before, and that was in 2019, because I look back to see when I was. So, but I haven't been here since. Our call to worship. Gracious God, Lord of all, in awe and reverence, we come to worship and adore you, to proclaim your greatness, to acknowledge your power, wonder, and holiness. We thank you that we can come before you in prayer, that for all your greatness, we can speak to you as a friend through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is 666, Master Speak, Thy Servant Hearer. Oh, 
And, but I always um, turn away from the mic when I'm singing because when I love singing, I'm really Welsh in that way. But when God gave out good singing voices, I was the back of the queue because I tone deaf. That's why I always move away from the mic when we're singing. Come with me now with our prayers of praise, confession, and assurance. Gracious and merciful God, we praise you once more for all you have done for us in Christ, for your victory through him over sin and evil, darkness and death. We praise you that your love, which for your love, which cannot be kept down, whatever it may face, whoever may conspire against it, may that confidence inspire us to keep following you through good and bad. As we remember the great love and sacrifice of Christ, we come seeking your forgiveness and help for we have failed you in so many ways. Lord, have mercy on us. We often live the way, we often live in the way we shouldn't and not live in the way you have shown us. We have not loved you as you love us or our neighbors as ourselves. We have not taken up our cross to follow Jesus. Lord, have mercy on us. But through the cross, we have the assurance of forgiveness and a newness of life that only you can give through Jesus Christ, our loving Lord and Savior. Amen. And our next hymn is 254, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Thank you. 
before I call up the readers, I just want you to know that a couple of weeks ago, I was out in the Holy Land. I did a 10 day pilgrimage following in the footsteps of my Lord. And it was the most wonderful experience that I've ever had. Spiritually, I've come back a lot stronger. My faith has been it's double what it was before. Um, I reviewed my vows in the Jordan and I did so many things following in the footsteps of my Lord. I just wanted you to know that um, spiritually, it was the most wonderful experience that I could have ever had. Now we'll have our reading. The first reading is Psalm 143. Psalm 143. Prayer for Deliverance from Enemies, a Psalm of David. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications in your faithfulness. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me. My heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Selah. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Save me, O Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a level path. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your steadfast love, cut off my enemies and destroy all my adversaries, for I am your servant. Amen. Thank you very much. And our next hymn is 519, Father, I place into your hands.
second reading which is from Luke chapter 11 verses 1 to 13. He was praying in a certain place and after he, he had finished one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three lo loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds and for everyone who lock, knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Amen. Thank you very much. need to change my glasses a minute. How important is prayer to each of you? It should be very important because if Jesus needed to pray to God, his father, then how much more do we need to pray? When I was reading this passage one evening, it came to me that although I have said this prayer many times, how often have I said it parrot fashion, not really meaning what I was saying. But this is a very important prayer, for it is one that Jesus taught us. In this passage, Jesus is saying how important prayer is, and not only prayer, but the order of preference in which we make our requests. 
We live in an age of mo mo mobile phones. I always have mine with me. If for some reason I forget it, I turn round and go back home. I'm always eager to keep in touch with my family and friends and they with me. But how much more important is it to keep in touch with God? And the only way we can do this is by prayer. Reading the Bible is important as we learn more of God's love. But it is only through prayer that we can know what his will for us is. It was usual for the Jews to repeat Shilam every morning and evening, and it usually started with, Hear, O Israel. It was quite long, but was not always meaningful. So when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, he was quick off the mark here and grasped the opportunity to show that prayer should not only be long and should not be long and formal as the rabbis taught, but full of reverence and meaning. For our prayers must be meaningful. Jesus knew that sooner or later, life would, will almost overwhelm us. We will have many pressures and problems, physical and spiritual. Give us each day our daily bread. Relationships and mental problems, forgive us our debt moral problems, lead us not into temptations. Jesus is saying here that God is our father and we can go to him and he will help us through. So let us look at the Lord's prayer in a little more detail. Firstly, we should believe in prayer for that puts us in the right frame of mind to put our needs not our wants to him. As often our prayers are like a shopping list. Instead of being thankful for all the blessings we have received. The Lord's Prayer focuses on three aspects of prayer. Our reverence to God, our needs, and God's faithfulness. Our reverence to God our needs, and God's faithfulness. The Lord's Prayer is very true of life today, for life is a combination of highs and lows. But Jesus is saying that God is a good Father and is ready to meet our needs, although not always in the way we would wish. The prayer starts with praising God, the first three all call attention to God's greatness. Hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Hallowed be your name. We should take God seriously and we should go to him as we would a loving parent who is always there for us. Thy kingdom come. It's not a passive prayer. It is that we should make God our first priority. For in this part, we are asking God to bring his kingdom into our hearts and that we do his will, which is spreading the good news of his love to all. Thy will be done. This is not a prayer for the faint hearted. It is a prayer of commitment to doing whatever God asks of us. For although we often ask, why me? Or please God, can't you ask someone more suitable to do than me to do that task? But be assured, he never asks us or to do anything beyond our capabilities. In the second part, it is a feeling of lowliness. Give us this day our daily bread. 
Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You can see and feel the difference between the first and second sections. The first is of God's name, God's kingdom, and God's will. The second is asking God to provide us with not only physical, but spiritual food. In verse 11, Jesus is telling us not to ask for riches. Let us live one day at a time, for we need just enough to see us through that day. For God wants our minds and body not to be cluttered with unnecessary things that stop us from serving him. In verse 12, we are to acknowledge that we are sinners and need God's forgiveness each day. If we are true followers of Jesus, we should not hold a grudge against anyone. For if we do, we don't deserve forgiveness. We should ask not only for our own forgiveness, but to help us to forgive others. For to remain unforgiving shows we do not understand the extent of God's love. And as his people, we should believe in his word and follow his way. Think of a person who have wronged you. Have you really forgiven them? Do you show love and compassion to all? And to them. God loves us just as we are. So we should be the same with those who have wronged us. For we should say, please have mercy on me and forgive me. And let me live in the freedom of your love. For if we have his freedom, we really are living in his love. He gave a new life through his death. This is my new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. For when we pray for forgiveness, we should know that it is through his love for us that he gave his beloved son to die so that our sins could be forgiven. A personal story now. My daughter was married and she came home one evening and her and her husband were looking glum and I said to them, what's the matter with you? And they said nothing. And then when we were washing up, she said, mum, I've asked Chris for a divorce and he's not very happy about it. I said, how do you, how do you think he feels, Sean? Anyway, for me, worse was to come. She went to live with a woman and I was heartbroken. My friend here can convey that to you as well. And I couldn't come to terms with it. It was like a bereavement to me. And I work for funeral directors and Sean and myself, we were friends, but there was this barrier between us. And on a New Year's Eve in Newport, some boys threw some fireworks into a house and killed a young man. And his father came to me to make the funeral arrangements. He was a Roman Catholic. And he came into the office one night. It was a Monday night, it was January, and it was pouring with rain, dark and miserable. And we were talking and he said to me, he said, I'm having a special mass tonight, Ivy. I said, what for? He said, to ask forgiveness for the boys who killed my son. So I looked at him aghast. And he said, how can I ask God to forgive me if I can't forgive? And this was ringing in my ears and I went home and I didn't even take my coat off. 
I rang my daughter and I said, Sean, will you bring Helen down for dinner tomorrow night? Now she could have said, well, you haven't been very nice to us for the last six months, why should I? But no, her answer was, she cried on the phone and said, thank you, mum. That's true forgiveness. And that's how God is with us. We can do whatever we want it for, to him, but he still forgives us. And to me, that is a true um, demonstration of true love. When she said, thank you, mum. And from that day to this, we are more like sisters than we are daughter, mum and daughter. We've got a wonderful relationship. And that is how our relationship should be with God. Lead us not into temptation. What is the difference between temptation and testing? How can, we, how can a temptation to sin become an, an avenue to spiritual growth? I can't answer that, but perhaps it is something to think about. For when we are in difficult situations, is it God testing us, testing our spiritual strength? Excuse me a minute. our spiritual strength, or do we become stronger in our faith by that testing? But we can only do this with the help of the Holy Spirit, for it is through the Holy Spirit that we have the strength to see it through. So in conclusion, this prayer is very challenging to us Christians that Jesus is teaching us is that God is our Father. He is with us, not now, not someone in the distant past, but it is, but is with us every hour of every day. We must go to God with reverence and humility, not in fear. For whatever we have done, he is our loving father and will forgive us. We can ask that through the Holy Spirit, God's kingdom will come into our hearts and then we will do his will. We should not ask for more than we need physically or spiritually for the tasks ahead. We all need forgiveness. But through the death of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection, we are assured of God's forgiveness. But we must ask for strength to overcome any testing situation which is challenging to us. For sometimes God tests our faith. We cannot avoid temptation, but through the grace of God, he will help us to come through it spiritually stronger and able to show more love and compassion to others. In this passage, I was puzzled by, the, by what Jesus meant in verse seven and eight. Are we like the man who asked his friend for bread in the middle of the night and expect his friend to do his bidding? Do we expect God to answer our prayers at once? Or do we trust him enough to wait for his answer, for him to answer us at, a time, at his time and way? Is Jesus saying we should have patience and not expect God to answer our prayers as we would wish, but leave it in his hands for him to answer them as is best for us and his kingdom. There is so much more in this passage than I ever thought of, and I have read it many times. 
But that night, I seemed to have a better understanding of what Jesus was saying. I hope and pray that I have given you something to take home and think about. For Jesus taught us that prayer. And whatever Jesus taught, he didn't do it without much thought and much prayer with his father. I often said the Lord's Prayer, parrot fashion. But now it makes me think as we say it. It is a wonderful prayer. It is one that Jesus taught us, and we should say it with reverence, because it is through his death and his resurrection that we can go to, G to God and pray as a friend and a father. Amen. And now we'll have our prayer of thanksgiving and intercession. Loving Lord, we thank you for the countless blessings that we receive every moment of every day. We thank you that you gave your life for us. But there are times when we look at other people's lives and find it hard to believe things can ever change for the better. We see those wrapped in illness, weighed down by anxiety, tormented by depression, crippled by death, broken by alcohol, destroyed by drugs, scarred by bereavement, shattered by unemployment, children bullied, abused sexually and physically, but afraid to speak out. Oh God, put your loving arms around all those in need, especially little children. And we wonder what their prospects really are. Show us in which way we can realistically offer them help. We pray for all those who are known to us now. Friends, family, members of our fellowships, colleagues at work, neighbors, acquaintances, as well as the countless people unknown to us, each struggling under their own particular burden. Each are known to you and loved by you. And we pray for this church which is a beacon in this community. Oh God, be with them and keep them and show them your love. And let us all go out and express your love to all. And lastly, we pray that through your loving grace, we are saved and we can show our love for you and others through the way we live. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our loving Lord and Savior. Amen. And now shall we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, do you take up an offering here or not? Uh, no, we have an offering place. At the back. Oh, right. We like Shall we just, just offer ourselves to Jesus then? O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the offerings which have been received this morning, and we pray that you will use them to extend your kingdom here in this vicinity. But more than that, we give our lives to you. We offer our lives as a token of your love for all. We ask this through Jesus. Amen. And now we'll have our last hymn, which is my favorite. <laughs> Let love be real. And it's <coughs> 615.
I don't know about you, but to me, that is the most beautiful hymn. And the first time I heard it was up in Grasmere, up in the Lake District. And I went to the little Methodist church there in Grasmere and they sang this hymn and I, we didn't have singing the faith then. And um, boldly I went up to the minister and said, can I have a copy of that? Yes, of course you can, he said. And he gave me a copy. And one of my bedrooms at home, I've made into a little office and I've got those words in a frame because I feel if I can live by that hymn, I would be a much better person. And it gives me encouragement if I'm down, I look at that hymn on the wood and I know that I will get through. And I think the words are the most beautiful words that I've ever heard. Loving God, go with us now on our journey of faith. Revive us when we grow weary. Direct us when we go astray. Inspire us when we lose heart. Keep us traveling ever onward, a pilgrim people, looking to Jesus, who has run the race before us. Amen. And now shall we have the blessing, the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you.